Welcome back everyone. Now if you want to be extreme success in databases, you need to speak the right language. And I ain't talking no SQL or any other fancy programming language. I'm talking terminology. And what I mean by that is it's important to know some specific terms so that way when you communicate with other experts in the field, you know what they're talking about. You don't just want to be like, you know that one thing that that one guy talked about that helps things be unique? Oh, I forget what it's called. You don't want to be like that. So I think it's important to know some of the most common terms. Just studying these terms alone will help you get a better grasp of databases, how to structure them, how to make them, all of that good stuff. The first term you should know is data. Not data, that seems pretty simple, but we're gonna get gradually more complex. Data is facts, information, anything you want to store for later use. When we collect a bunch of data, it's known as a database. So think of data as information and a database as a collection of a bunch of information. Now when we have a database, we need a way to interact with that database. And that's where a database management system comes in. Now the database management system is a software that allows us to use the database. SQL Server is an example of a database management system. Now, the distinction between all of these terms is kind of cloudy, so often people will use things interchangeably. So, someone might say, oh, SQL Server is a database. Don't be like, Psh, no, it's a database management system. It's because there's they're so similar that there's not fine lines between these terms. In fact, there is another type of database management system known as a relational database management system. Now the R in this word stands for relational. A relational database presents our data in tables. Essentially, the database management system's job is to take data that could be scattered on the computer's hard drive or solid state drive and present it in a beautiful way. <laughs> So let's go classic, we'll go with the hard drive. Let's say this is the hard drive, right? And you have data just stored all in this thing, right? Well, you want to look at this data in a certain way. The database management system will take all this data and present it to you in a nice, beautiful table. That's what a relational database management system is. SQL Server is also a relational database management system. But not all database management systems are relational. So if you had this circle that represents databases, this might be relational databases. All relational database management systems are database management systems, obviously from the name, but not all database management systems are relational. For example, we still have all of these ones out here that are not relational. Now the important thing to take away from these words is relational. That's a fancy word that means table. Now what exactly is a table? Well, you can think of it as a square, and this table is going to have a name, and inside of the table, there's going to be columns. So each column is going to have a header of what that column is called. So it really depends on what the table is about. But you could have a table to store recent orders, for example. So the name of the table might be orders, and the columns might be like, order ID, date ordered, who ordered it, stuff like that. Now this is just an example. As to how to actually structure this data, that's something that requires database design, which we'll talk about that in upcoming videos. But let's just say this is the perfectly designed table, <laughs> and we want to store information in this table. That's where the term row comes in. So a row is a record of information that goes this way and gives a value for each one of these columns. Now this is a really bad example of the kind of data you would store in here, <laughs> but <laughs> essentially every single purchase is going to be entered into this table as a row. So this would probably be called the purchases table and every single row would be an example of a purchase or you could think of it as an instance of a purchase. So we could have another one in here with the idea of eight. This guy bought a house, $300, <laughs> cheap house. Uh, who bought it? Uh, the guy with the ID of 112, date purchased. So the two key words here you really need to know are column and row. There are a few other terms you will come across, including record. A record is essentially another name for a row. You'll also hear the term field, which I use that to represent one value within a column. And you can also hear that called a cell. 
there's a lot of different terms that you need to become familiar with. Now, when you are inputting data into this table, sometimes you will leave a field blank. For example, we can have the ID of 10 stuff. Uh, we could have them by a poodle. And the poodle costs $300,000. Who bought it? The dude with the ID of 96. But the date purchased, we don't put that information in. When we do that, that is called a null or a null. A null is essentially the absence of a value. So I'll just continue my list <laughs> down here. <laughs> some people think nulls are acceptable, some people don't think they're acceptable, and it ultimately depends on what column it's in. For example, having the stuff null would be not okay because it's a purchase. How can you have a purchase without buying anything? <laughs> and even in this situation, the date purchase would probably want to have a value every single time. So making those decisions of what's allowed to be null and what's not allowed to be null brings up the idea of database design again. Now for those of you who've seen my other series, you know I really focus heavily on database design. So the start of my series are almost all identical because we go through the whole database design process. But I find that it's very, very, very important because your database design decides how your database is going to work. What kind of tables are we going to create? What are we going to store in those tables? What are we going to name our tables? What columns have what attributes? All of that information is decided by our database design. And the database design helps us to protect data integrity. Now, I'm not going to write that one because that's actually the term we are going to start with in the next video. So thanks, guys. Hopefully all of this information was somewhat useful. These are beginner terms, so you're going to come across a lot more as you go on. But it's very important that you understand this foundation and have it in your brain. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to click like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video.